G'day guys, what's going on? It's Jesse here from the True Footy YouTube channel, making a video on the spot, actually. Uh, with limited preparation, I've just seen the AFL Evolution 2 uh, ratings are out, um, which is really, really interesting. I love this kind of stuff, to be honest. I love, I've always loved like trying to get what um, FIFA ratings AFL players would be. I love all that sort of stuff. So uh, in today's video, I'm simply going to look at an article telling us all about the ratings and reacting to it with you. I've only had a brief look ahead, um, but I, at the moment I've got a foxsports.com.au uh, article open telling us all the lists and, uh, and all the players. So let's have a look. Let's see how well we think they did. One thing from memory though in previous games is I'm aware that they actually tried to make all the teams relatively even. I think that's so that when you play online, um, there's more teams that can play against each other rather than everyone just going Richmond, GWS, Collingwood and uh, West Coast. Um, and no one would go Gold Coast. So I kind of understand what they've done there, but it is important caveat to know that these ratings are going to be a little bit slanted um, with that in mind. But let's have a look at the top. We've got some top players here. Uh, Dustin Martin is the top rated player in the game, 97. So that's really high. Uh, in FIFA, I think the top player is Messi, 94. At least it was a few years ago. Um, I don't know if they ever put anyone up to 95, but at the moment, um, Dusty, 97, is the best player in the game, which I'm comfortable with. Uh, Danger, 96, Franklin, 96, and Fife, 96, uh, the next three, and yeah, that, that makes sense. Paddy Cripps is probably the next best player after that, I understand that argument. One player I don't like the, where they've got is Brody Grundy. Uh, frankly, I think he is uh, probably up there in that Crips conversation, I think that's probably a little bit generous to my boy McGovern as much as I rate him. I'd probably have him behind those guys. Uh, Alex Rance is in the game, which is interesting. Rory Sloan is a wonderful player, obviously, but um, 94 does seem a little bit generous considering it's been a while since we've seen him at his best. Um, maybe 93 is also a little bit generous for Clayton Oliver, who is a very good player and will get better. Uh, but uh, yeah, I don't know if he's 93 yet. Bruce, 92, I do quite like that, but then I do feel a bit uncomfortable with him and Bontempelli being rated the same. Bontempelli behind Clayton Oliver and Rory Sloan, even I think Bontempelli is better than Lockie Neal, so I don't think I'm really comfortable with that. Uh, Cunnington, the same as Bont as well, seems a bit strange. Hawkins, Hearn and Penderbury, 92, yeah, nothing to really complain about. All right, let's just skim off the top of I don't want to go through every player in the league, but uh, let's have a look at Adelaide. So we talked about Sloan. Uh, Matty Crouch, 89. Taylor Walker, 89. Seems a little generous considering he's been uh, a while since he's been at his best. I think Brad Crouch is better than Matt Crouch, so 85 does seem a little stiff. Is Bryce Griggs still good enough to get 85? Remains to be seen. Moving down the list, I think Brody Smith may be a little bit harsh there with 80. Uh, Riley O'Brien, 73, sticks out like a sore thumb. That seems very strange. The same as Harry Schoenberg, who's an 18-year-old midfielder who hasn't played a game. Um, something's a little bit off there. Moving down to Brisbane, Lockie Neal 94, a little bit generous. Uh, Harris Andrews 92, Zorko 91. Uh, yeah, Zorko probably a little bit could be, no, I think actually Zorko is probably about right. Neal's probably a little bit too high. Uh, Daniel Rich, uh, oh, look, Charlie Cameron 85 probably should be up in that top four mark. I would probably have him in the high 80s based on this. Moving into Carlton, we talked about Paddy Cripps, Cade Simpson, 89, Eddie Betts, 89 is a little bit ridiculous for a guy who didn't really come on in the last uh, in his last year at Adelaide, in and out of the team. I don't think he's lost it as such, but um, obviously 89 is quite generous. Liam Jones, 86, as the fourth best player at Carlton. Wow, interesting. Other than that, pretty comfortable with a lot of that. Um... On to Collingwood, we talked about Grundy, Pendlebury, uh, side bottom 91, that seems fair, Trelaw 91, maybe a little bit behind side bottom, but generally that makes sense. Um, that all looks pretty sound, maybe Darcy Moore a little bit higher. Moving down the list, Jaden Stevenson only at 78, I would have thought maybe a little bit higher. Um, see, Majacek is probably a better player than Mason Cox as well, so... Yeah, I don't know about that one. Moving down the list, Shield, Merritt, Hurley, around that range. I don't know if I'd really rate Shield as better than Hurley, but I guess if it's off recent form, maybe. Connor McKemmer, that is pretty generous. Devin Smith, 86. I guess he was injured last year, but I think he's probably better than that in reality. Andrew McGrath is the same as Parrish. I would have thought maybe McGrath's a little bit better than Parrish. I'm kind of being a little bit picky here. Interestingly, they've still got David Mundy as the second best docker at 88. 
probably in reality, although he just hasn't gone to the park, so I, I don't know, I'm surprised they have Walters behind him. A little bit generous to Jesse Hogan, um, when I think someone like Luke Ryan's probably, and certainly Alex Pierce, have proven a lot more in recent seasons. Alex Pierce, that's a bit stiff on him. Now for Geelong, and that is a very strong top four. Gary Ablett with 90, Mitch Duncan 89. Mitch Duncan's probably been better than Ablett lately. Pretty comfortable with a lot of Geelong's ratings. Is Jenkins really that good? Probably not. Gold Coast have Jared Witts as their best player. Yes, I would agree with that. And Hugh Greenfoot as their second best player is very interesting. Uh, David Swallowed 82, Sexton 82. A lot of that makes sense, actually. Brandon Ellis. Is Brandon Ellis that much worse than Hugh Greenwood? Probably not. Fiorini at 76 is probably robbery. He's probably one of their better midfielders, so I uh, don't know about that one. I feel like Will Brody probably will, should be rated a bit higher than that, too. Interestingly, Phil Davis and Josh Kelly are GWS's best players, ahead of Lockie Whitfield and Cornelio. Uh, even Toby Green at 86. That is stiff. I reckon their best players are Whitfield, Cornelio, and Green, to be honest, and then Jeremy Cameron at 87. So those are some pretty interesting ratings, to be honest. Taranto at 85 um, seems a little bit stiff. He's sure at 88 is probably the one you'd bring down. Same as Callum Ward at 90. Jeremy Finlayson, 68. Are you joking? That is an absolute howl of that one. So Luke Bruce is Hawthorne's best player. Look, I don't mind that because I think Bruce is an absolute wizard. Does he deserve a higher rating than some other guys? I don't know. Tom Mitchell, 91, I understand. Gunston's up there. Sicily's up there. Look, those numbers are pretty okay. Is John Patton better than Isaac Smith? I would have thought no. Jager O'Meara is probably a little bit stiff. In fact, definitely stiff. Jager O'Meara is definitely better than some of those guys above him. Melbourne's got a pretty formidable team with Oliver, Lever, and Gorn as their top three. Melksham, 89, is generous. He is a good player, but 89 is probably a little generous. Barney's down there at 85. I think he's missed some football, which works against him. Luke Jackson down at 58. Would that make him the lowest rated player in the game? I haven't actually had a look yet. North Melbourne have got Cunnington, Higgins, and Goldstein as their top three. Ben Brown, yeah, maybe deserves a little bit higher, but they, at least they've got the right four at the top. Cam Zerha at 74, maybe a little bit stiff. I think he's better than Bonner. Certainly showed more than Bonner. Port Adelaide have Boak and Gray as their top two players, followed by Jonas and Wines. You'd probably not argue with that. Jack Watts, 85, maybe a little bit generous there. I would have thought Scott Lysett and Brad Ebert are better players than Jack Watts. So is Tom Rockliffe, to be frank. Jake Passini, isn't he just like a first year like defender that hasn't played a game yet? He's better than Ryan Burton and Dan Houston. Am I not mix am I mixing him up? Jake Passini, I'm pretty sure he's just like that Swan District's key back. I don't know, that seems weird. Xavier Dersma down at 69. Considerably worse than, I think that's a mistake. That's the only possible explanation. Richmond, that top four is formidable. Shane Edwards, 91. Kane Lambert, 87. Cochin, 88. Interesting. I think these are fairly okay. Nothing really stands out. Prestia is maybe a little bit hard done by. I'm really glad they didn't put Marlene Pickett up like really ridiculously high. I was half expecting that. Sydney Stack only at 70. I feel like it's an oversight. St Kilda have Carlisle and Steele and Gresham. Equally linked as their best player, that's interesting. Tim Membry's up there, yeah, he's a pretty good player. Feelings 84, Hanabry 83, Brad Hill 82, probably deserves to be higher. I think he's in the conversation as being their best player. But it is fairly even at St Kilda, I think. Hunter Clark 73, I think he should be better than that. I don't, I, he's actually quite a good player. Rowan Marshall 65. Yeah, so you look at that and you just think somebody's just forgot to edit his stats. The Swans have got Buddy, Parker, Lloyd, Kennedy, and Heaney. Rampy is their best players. The top 10 talent's still pretty good at Sydney, isn't it? Lewis Taylor, 82. Sam Gray, 82. That's an eyebrow raiser. Both players were delisted. I know Sam Gray wasn't strictly delisted. I think they're just going to let him go. But um, yeah, I don't know about that one. Oliver Florence, 76, I think. I think a little bit stiff. West Coast Eagles, all right, now here's for the real show. You've got Shuey and Kennedy rated the same. I think that's probably fair. Kennedy's dropped off and Kennedy, and Shuey's probably playing the best football. Barras is definitely not better than Yo or Gaff or Tim Kelly. Um, so there's a few anomalies here. Nothing too outrageous that I can see, to be honest. Maybe a little generous to Duggan. Liam Ryan maybe a bit stiff. Hutchings maybe a little harsh. Oscar Allen's probably, well, certainly a lot better than some of these players ahead of him, but look, that's okay. Other than that, all pretty good. And now that's Callum Jamison, who's probably, 56 is probably the lowest score I've noticed so far. 
Up to the dogs, finally. Interestingly, Johannesson is their third best player. I really don't think so. Uh, Matt Suckling, 87, seems a little generous as well. We got Dunkley down here at 85. Lockie Hunter down at 83. Other than that, nothing really captures the eye. Nah, that's just about it. All right, guys, well, let me know in the comments what you thought. Overall, I think they were okay ratings. It's hard to get your round, head around like what is a good score. You just have to compare it from top to bottom, the best players and the worst players. Um, and it's hard to can compare it to FIFA if you're like me and you played a lot of FIFA It's hard to stop making that comparison Definitely some howlers in there. I do think they're just genuinely oversights like they've just genuinely forgot to edit it like Rowan Marshall down at 68 uh, Finn Layson around the similar sort of rating just seems a bit ridiculous, but um, Be interesting to see. I don't actually know if you can customize um, So maybe someone can help me out in the comments whether you can or not um, I guess we'll soon find out um, and maybe they update throughout the season. But anyway, guys, let me know what you think in the comments. I appreciate you watching and I will see you again soon in another video. Thanks for watching. Cheers.